I was just thinking about is why don't doctors tell the whole truth? Like, if they're going to do something to you that they know is going to be painful, come on. They will tell you you're going to experience some discomfort. Why don't they just say, this is going to hurt? <laughs> And you're going to be hollering. Why don't they say that? Why is my armpit black today? It's black, all right? And the doctor told me that there would be some skin darkening. She said it'll be like a tan. She said, you know, people like us, it's just like olive toned, you know, like light tan. Um, and she said people like us with more melanin in our skin, uh, tend to tan and hold on to the tan longer. I said, oh yeah, like I can tan, you know, get uh, stripes on my feet from my sandals in the summertime and they'll be there well into winter. And she said, okay, well you may have um, some of that, but it'll go away. Uh, it's more than tanning, okay? <laughs> like it's just, it's like being hit with a bat. I wish medical professionals would tell the whole truth. Not in a scary way. Oh my God, girl. You're going to be burnt up. You know, you don't say anything like that, but your skin is going to tan and it could turn anywhere from slight darkening to pitch black, but you will recover. Like, let me know that. Then I don't think something's wrong every time something happens. I know I don't want to be the dead horse. It's dead already, but that was just something I thought about today. And here we go. <laughs> Bye. Y'all know what time it is. I ain't even gonna say it. Three dollars. I ain't gonna let the devil steal my joy today. Give me my card, devil. Come on. Anyway. I actually was able to do some good today. I swear... <laughs> I'm gonna fix it. I was able to do some good. As I came out of treatment, a woman walked up to me and said, were you just on the breathing machine? And I said, no, I got radiation. <laughs> and I didn't, I wasn't understanding what she was asking me. And she said, no, uh, I'm getting radiation too. I just wanna know if, I'm gonna pull over when I can and fix this. I just wanna know how difficult it is on the machine where you have to hold your breath. So I did that for uh, three weeks and a day, I believe. Yeah, three weeks and a day. And I was nervous about it too. Like I was practicing holding my breath and whatnot. Y'all, let me pull over and fix this. Alright, so she wanted to know uh, how hard it was to hold your breath. Like, is it problematic when they clip your nose? Because they clip your nose, they put a piece of tape under your nose to hold the clip in place. And come on. Then they put a, a breathing tube in your mouth. You're only well you can only breathe through that tube anyway you need to breathe in and out through that tube and then they give you a button to hold in your hand it's like a a little tube with a button on top that you hold in your hand you keep your thumb on the button and they'll tell you push the button the radiation machine cannot work unless the button is pushed so if there's a problem, which occurred a couple times, if there's something wrong or you need to cough or well, you know whatever is going on and you need them to not radiate you right then, um, then you take your finger off the button. If you're having an emergency, you push the button twice, if you can. So I explained that to her. She just kept saying, you know, I've been practicing with my husband with, with holding my breath. I can get up to two minutes, which is pretty freaking good. I can get up to two minutes but I'm just concerned, like I won't be able to swallow with the, the thing clipping my nose. I told her the only time I had a problem with that was on days when I was having allergy issues. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, 
we gonna work it out. The only days I had pro a problem with that was when I was having allergy issues um, and I felt like, you know, like post nasal drip or whatever, that wasn't great, but you'll be fine. Nothing's painful. You never feel like, oh my goodness, I can't breathe. I'm, I'm gonna run out of air. There's none of that going on. Right before they radiate you, they spend most of the time of the session like just getting you into position position because everything's so precise and then they all like rush out of the room and then this big metal door closes and and it's like i would see them do that and, and it just reminds you of how dangerous this is radiation is not supposed to be going into your body like that's not the human body is not supposed to have to go through things like that so i'd see them run and i just be thinking i want to go too <laughs> want to go um but you can't go and then they close the metal door and that makes it worse but uh in the place that i go to they play calming scenes on the ceiling <laughs> i'm gonna ask i'm gonna see if i can take my phone in um because i only have two more sessions take my phone in either tomorrow or friday and shoot from my point of view when i'm lying down Hi, hi, V. <laughs> okay, and then the, the room. Okay. They play calming scenes on the ceiling, like, you know, water, a beach. Um, the first couple times I went, they, were, they had panda bears rolling around, which was not great because panda bears are funny to me. Like when they just, you know, they're just all roly-poly and I find that funny. And so for me to control my breathing and hold my breath, that and laughing don't go together too well. Uh, but just beautiful things. Sky scenes with birds flying across the skies. Beautiful blue sky with, with white puffy clouds. That kind of thing to calm you. And the lights change color in the room. Like there are lights all around the perimeter of the room. And they gradually change from one color to the next very slowly. And it's, it's nice and soothing because the, the, the whole experience is stressful enough. So I explained that to her and she felt better at the end. She got, um, they called her name and so she had to go and she's like, thank you so much, this is so helpful. And I just, I felt good that I was able to help somebody who didn't know what to expect. She's doing the setup today. Uh, you go in for a setup session before you have radiation and it takes a little over an hour, like between an hour and an hour and a half and they figure out, they, they do all these mathematical measurements and stuff, <laughs> uh, big brain stuff. They position, you figure out how to position you, which angle to shoot, your, you know, shoot you from, you know, radiation wise, all these things. And that takes a while. But after that, every day I'm in there, maybe 10 minutes tops. And only a portion of that is the actual being radiated. Let me explain why some people have to do the, the breathing machine. Um, if breast cancer is on the left side, I have it on the left, and uh, that's where your heart is, you know? Um, so they have to be careful because they don't want to radiate your heart and cause you heart problems down the road. So they have you do something called a deep inspiration breath hold. And not inspiration as in, oh, I feel so inspired, but inspiration in the, the sense that it means breathing, you know, respiration, inspiration, expiration, that kind of thing. And they have you breathe in, hold your breath, because you, then your lungs are inflated. I couldn't even see the, the light. Your lungs are inflated and it, sort of moves your heart out of the way, out of the line of fire in, in a manner of speaking. So that's why they have, have some people do that. If you have breast cancer and it's on the left, either that or the, another technique is to um, have you lie face down and then your boobs are like through some holes and they radiate you that way. They didn't do me like that. So that's why some people have to have this and, and with the breathing tube and some people don't. 
and I was nervous about it too. I was like, how is that going to work? I got asthma. Like, I don't know <laughs> what's going on. Um, but it worked fine. It worked just fine. And now I don't have to do that because they're, they are targeting a specific area in a way where supposedly, I'm trusting these people, supposedly there's no way from the angle, there's no way it can hit my heart anyway. Now, my lungs are in there, you know, right under my chest wall. So I don't know what's happening with my lungs. I guess you're going to have to check back with me in, you know, 10, 20 years to find out. Hopefully nothing because, yeah, hopefully nothing. But that's what it is. So I was able to help one person feel better today. And um, it actually made me feel better about talking about this online because other people are going through it. Other people are going through it. You don't know who you're going to help. You may not ever meet the person. You may not ever see them. Um, but you can help somebody. I just found out that a former classmate of mine also has breast cancer. She's got a different kind. Hers is aggressive. Uh, but it's treatable because the kind she has responds to a certain type of medication. Just like mine, for mine, I have to take the estrogen blocking pills. For her, she's going to have to take, um, she has to have chemo. And it's a, a certain type of medication that they put, you know, that, that makes up her chemo that targets this particular cancer. So hers is treatable too. And because she saw my video on my Instagram, she said, hey, I'm going through this too. You just never know. You never know. By you sharing your truth, you never know who needs to hear it, who needs to see you, um, and who needs the information that you have to share. And you may never know, but tell the truth anyway. Okay, I got to go on to CVS and get this prescription filled. It's a prescription for Silvadine cream. And it's something that they prescribe for burn victims. Because apparently now I am a burn victim by the looks of my underarm, which I will not show you, and you're welcome. All right, see you later. Bye.